Hello everybody! Today I'm going to talk about the basics of trading and secret stashes and how to become richer than your friends or anyone in Naveskane. The first thing you need to do in order to trade is to locate a trader. Luckily I have a map which has all the traders marked. There's one trader per one biome. This applies only to the Naveskane map and if you are playing on a random gen map, you are on your own. Now that we have the locations covered, we can go see the basics of the bartering skill. So, bartering is leveled up by selling and buying items. Basically, one token or coin equals 10 points of experience into the bartering skill. At first, you'll need around 1000 EXP to level up your bartering skill which equals one item worth 100 coins being sold. As you progress, it gets harder to level it. When you get level 50, you'll need around 5000 EXP to level up. When you get level 70, you'll need around 7000 EXP to level up and so on. The benefits of the bartering skill are that you can buy items for less tokens and sell them for more. Depending on the item, you might be able to sell them for up to 4 times the original price when you have bartering at level 100, while you can buy items for less than half the price they used to be. However, there are some things you have to keep in mind when selling items in order to level up or just to get the tokens. First thing is that you can only get one level per one stack of items, so no matter how many items you sell, you still will only get one level. So, for example, you have level 1 in bartering, and you have 500 gas barrels. If you sell them one by one, you will get around 1000 EXP per gas barrel. But, if you sell them all at once, you will get only 1000 EXP which would be just enough to level your skill up by one. So, in order to maximize your experience income for the bartering skill, you should sell your expensive items one by one or in smaller stacks, so that you don't hit the max experience cap for the current level. Uh, the second thing you should keep in mind is that you can only sell three full stacks of items at once to the trader, and then you will have to wait um, until he restocks. Uh, so basically, you can sell 1500 gas barrels until he refuses to buy any more. Of course, all items don't have such high stacks. You could sell 15 first aid kits to him, or 3 pistols for example, and then you would have to wait until he restocks so that you can sell them again. That's just to clarify things a bit, because 1500 gas barrels is very much. Next up are the secret stashes. At first you'll be able to buy only the very basic schematics and some, well, okay items. But as you continue to put points into the perk, you will be able to buy nicer and nicer items such as bandit armors and better weapons, the beer books and nicer schematics. The items you should especially keep your eyes open for are shopping baskets, um, the tasting and breathing books, which are used for um, growing hops from hop seeds and crafting beer out of the hops, and also solar cells, which you can only buy from the traders and they will give you infinite source of energy. Maybe next. Alright, next up are the easiest ways to make some money. As you can probably guess, we are treasure hunting right now. That's because it's one of the best ways to make money and have fun at the same time. This time 10 minutes of work earned me 10,000 coins, which is very nice. The problem with treasure hunting, however, is that although the maps drop from every zombie, the drops are very inconsistent. But when you do get a map drop, you'll have a lot of cash just waiting for you to dig it up. Second and probably the most obvious way to earn money is scavenging items. Welcome. Nice stuff to collect are schematics, stacks of paper and old cash, weapon parts and some clothing. The problem with selling weapon parts is that you could have used them to upgrade your current weapons unless you have your weapons at 600 quality. Paper seems quite underestimated as a way to make money, but actually you can find a lot of it everywhere and one stack is worth 600 gold, which is quite nice. 
As I said, weapon parts might not be as good for selling as you might imagine. Because if you have a workbench, you could upgrade your better part with uh, worse parts to make an even better part for you to use. But if you don't use a certain type of weapon at all, you might as well sell it. The same things apply to old cash and paper. A small amount isn't worth it, but a full stack is worth almost 3k money. So you might want to hold on to that. Then we have the hazmat suits and the military gear, um, which you can get from the radiated zombies and the soldier zombies, which can be found in military bases. They are a good source of money. The buffer coats and leather jackets are dropped by several zombies, especially the lumberjack zombies, and they can be worth much more than you'd think. There are also some other pieces of clothes ca that can be worth a lot, so keep your eyes open. Thanks for shopping here. Come again. Then there are some things that I almost forgot. One of them is the tires. You find them everywhere lying around on the roads, and they are one of the easiest and most safe ways to earn some coins in the beginning. And maybe even later in the game, because some of them are worth up to 1k gold. Then there's the small engines which you get by disassembling cars with branches. You'll usually get a lot of spare engines when you take apart cars for springs, mechanical parts and gas. And one more item from the scavenging category that you should keep if you stumble upon several of them. That's the blood draw kit. You get over 600 coins per one. But if you have only one, then don't sell it. Because the blood you draw with those can be used for the first aid kits. They're worth 800 coins per stack, but since you can only sell 3 stacks of them, you won't get too much. And besides, you'll probably use them up yourself. Now as for the crafted items that are worth selling, I'm going to start off with the most accessible in the beginning. In my opinion, those are all sorts of drinks, because you can find plants very early in the game if you're just a bit lucky. Coffee, golden rot tea and red tea are all worth around 400 gold per stack and you'll only need a campfire and bottled water to cook them. So as long as you have a farm, that's infinite income. But the drink you can craft very early on in the game is the yuca juice. You don't even need a campfire and it's worth more than most drinks are. It's 430 gold per stack and you don't even need a campfire to craft it. So that's something you could make in the very beginning. Then there's the obvious choice of bottled water that is worth 359 coins. Just get some murky water or snow and boil it. And there you have an infinite income of money. Then there's the priciest of the lot, which is snowberry juice. You get almost 1200 coins for it, but it's a bit harder to make, because you'll need cornmeals and snowberries for the extract and blueberries for the final drink. But as long as you have a farm, that shouldn't be a problem, so this is a great way to make money. Next up we have the grain alcohol, it's for 575 coins per stack. And you can craft it on a campfire with 3 cornmeals and 1 bottled water. Or with 1 cornmeal and 1 bottled murky water on a chemistry station. And as the last drink is the drink to rule them all, beer. You can only get the hop seeds from the trader, and same goes for the schematics to create beer. But if you have a chemistry station and fill all the other prerequisites, you will not only have a great drink for brawling with zombies, but you'll also have a very easy to make and valuable item to sell to the traders. One stack of which is worth 1.2k of money. And in my opinion it's the best craftable drink you could sell to traders, because it's so easy to make and it's worth so much. Next up, some items that are easy to make and good way to spend your excess iron and cloth fragments. So first are old couches. Um, you'll need 5 cloth, 10 nails and 10 wood to make one. A full pile of those and you'll have over 7k coins. Not the best item to sell, but still quite easy to make. Next up are cooking pots and cooking reels. They require the same amount of iron and clay, which is 25 iron and 5 clay, which is basically nothing. They're fast to create and you only need a forge. Out of the two, the cooking grill is better than the cooking pot, but even the pot sell for almost 5k per stack. While the grill sells for over 5k, almost 5.2k. And that's the price for 250 grills, not 500. 
So now you know what to do with the excess iron you might have lying in your forge. Uh, this one here is the classic method to make a lot of money and still as viable as ever and that's the gas barrels. To craft them you'll need to learn the gas can schematic which you can usually find from scavenging um, houses or by buying from the traders. If you don't have a steady income of gas then you'll probably be using it on your chainsaws, augers and mini bikes etc and you shouldn't sell them then. If you want to make gas yourself you have three options. One is combining three animal fats with grain alcohol on a campfire. The second option is combining one bottled murky water, one cornmeal and two animal fats together in a chemistry station. These two methods generate always 100 units of gas. Then there's the third most efficient way. For this you need oil shales which you have to convert into gas and then you'll have to convert gas into gas barrels. You find oil shales on deserts or actually beneath them. So you'll have to find a deposit by creating a mine by digging underground or finding a cave with some oil shale veins. After mining 12 or more shales you'll be able to convert them into 100 gas or more. Then once you reach 600 gas, you'll be able to convert them into gas barrels at a workbench. One gas barrel equals 400 coins when you have maxed out your bartering skill. We have one more relatively easy to make item. That would be the hard metal doors. You need 10 forged irons to make one and you get 50 coins for one door. So after spending 5000 forged irons, you'll get a full stack of the hard metal doors and we'll be able to sell them for 24k coins. Next up are items which you can craft if you have enough gunpowder. Which is not bad. First up are exploding crossbow bolts. You can sell them for 64 coins each. And you'll need one steel arrowhead, 8 gunpowders, 1 duct tape, 1 wood and 1 feather to wake one. You can obtain the duct tapes from bones relatively easily, but the gunpowder may be a problem. You either have it or you don't. But a stack of these can be sold for 16k. Then we have the flaming arrows which can be sold for 35 coins each or 8.8k for one stack. They don't require too much gunpowders, only two pieces of it. And the other materials are quite easy to obtain. So you probably should save up those exploding crossbow bolts for horde knights and sell flaming arrows instead. Last of the things that go boom is the TNT. No, not the stick of dynamite, the TNT. A stack of 20 is worth over 14k or one piece of it is worth 707 coins. You need almost the same materials to make a TNT as you need to make a stick of dynamite. But the TNT is worth much more. TNT's biggest problem is that it's so much fun to play around with. And that's why I never get to sell it. But it's relatively better income of coins than the arrows or exploding bolts. Next we have the items which usually require springs and forged steel. And the first item is the vault door which can be sold for 345 coins. It requires 12 forged steels and 2 springs. You'll need uh, 240 iron to make the 12 steels, so um, it's hard to come up with something more worthy to spend your iron on. Then there's the vault hatches which have the identical stats to vault doors. They are worth the same and you need the same mats. But there's better yet to come. Here are the old beds. Out of all the mats, springs are the hardest ones to obtain. It takes 4 steel and 4 coal to make one spring. But you get over 1k of coins per one bed or over half a million coins for a full stack of beds. So in my opinion that's easily enough compensation for the springs. But if you add some wood, cotton and cloth fragments to the equation, you'll be able to craft a king-sized bed. These bad boys can be sold for over 2k coins each. So that's over a million coins for one full stack of these. I don't think there is any item that would be any more profitable than the king-sized bed. But in case you don't want to craft beds, I will show you some more items that are quite profitable and some of them might be actually quite interesting too. Tyron desk that is 445 coins each or 227k per stack. 
4 springs and 15 forged iron needed to make it. So quite decent profit. The jail door that needs 12 forged steel, 2 springs and 2 mechanical parts. You can get 412 coins per 1 or 206k for a stack. Then we have the cooler, which is quite a surprising item. You can sell it for 240 coins and you only need 8 scrap plastics to make one. So hold on to those uh, scavenged scrap plastics, because a stack of these coolers is worth 120k. You could easily create a nice nest egg with these in the early game as long as you have a workbench. As one of the last items we have the garage doors. At 2.4k each or 1,116,000 per stack. Damn, that was not easy to pronounce. Uh, so yeah, the garage door is one of the containers for most profitable items. You need 240 iron, 6 springs and 12 mechanical parts. So kind of high requirements, but you get a lot for the materials you spend. Next up, the machete blades, the 24k a stack or 480 coins each, 200 iron and 40 clay needed, and with one letter you can make a full machete out of these blades, which could potentially fetch you even higher profits. As the second last item we have the not so profitable shower glass blocks, 7.5k for a stack, but you only need glass, uh, 4 lead and 1 clay. So 3 easily available materials for a bit of a profit. Last item that stands at 239 coins each is the bulletproof glass block. You'll need 10 glass, 10 stone, 40 lead, 20 iron and 20 clay to make one. So if you get bored of making beds, explosive or the iron items, you could consider making some glass blocks. So now, long story short, make drinks in the beginning, especially bottled water, chuka juice and when you can, the beer. Eventually move on to coolers, gas barrels, TNT and of course the beds. Or maybe make doors, especially the garage doors, they are worth shit ton of money. I honestly don't know what you would do with million coins in this game. Maybe you could roleplay a pirate king or a dragon. That's up to you to decide. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing if this video was useful to you. Bye!